that's raised the point. But I just think we're living in a very, very different era. Um, you know, at the time of, of, of the COVID, we didn't have things like the information age, we didn't have the internet, social media, and those types of things. What would concern me is that today's youth is very much accustomed to actually just participating via one of those platforms, which is, although that is valid in its own way, is not exactly the same as, you know, real, live involvement, you know, physically being there and participating, which is a lot more real. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I come into contact with a lot of young people through my work. I, I teach at the uni mm -hmm. as well. And one of the things that I see is that, you know, they're kind of aware of the world, but more sort of, you know, at their fingertips on whatever device they're using, but we're really just getting in there and literally lending their voice. That's a different story. Mm -hmm. And how do we encourage them to do that when I feel um, I don't want to generalize and say all young people are like this, that would be unfair, obviously. But I think quite a few of them would just say, well, where's the online petition I can sign? Yeah. Or, or can I grab that? You know, is there a Twitter? That's, what, that's how they live nowadays. Mm. But I think for me, with the, 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 the picket and, and other similar things, yeah. What made it so so special is not only the you know the actual 24 hours and, and, and the length of time that it went on, but that people were there. Yeah. They gave off their time, their energy, their physicality. You know, they were literally there on the streets, and that makes it in, incredibly meaningful. Mm. So how do we get young people to see how meaningful that is? Do you know about volunteering? Yes, of course. No, I mean, you know about the, the volunteering rates in this country. Well, I don't have statistics to hand. Yeah. In this country, young people volunteer more than anyone else. Okay. Now, the, hours, the, the volunteering rates, young people are most, the, the, the volunteering rates in this country, the people who, who commit the most to volunteering are young people and the old. Uh, people over the age of 65. Mm -hmm. The people who don't volunteer in this country are the people between 55 and 70 because the baby boomer generation are the most selfish. Mm -hmm. And they're, they are all securely enough the least politically engaged because that generation are right, Thatcher's generation. And part of the reason quite often when young people, people who do a bit work with young people, when they ask them why they don't engage politically is because that's the generation mm -hmm. who at the moment are, uh, are in power, mm -hmm. and young people don't engage with 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 politics, and they don't engage with activism in a particular way because that generation have disenfranchised them. It's not about, to a large extent, that they're not. In, they, they they simply they simply have been shut out by and large by that generation. It's it's not, and they and they quite actively say it a lot of the time. You know, it's been it's been worked. It, it's it's not a it's not a problem of that of that generation. They don't see that generation have worked it to 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 a large and it's not just one generation, about three or four generations have worked it in this country. They've gone. You know, when Gavin was talking about the caveats, those caveats are by the way. Like I, I come from education. And it's how that those generations have worked in that we need to make sure that the 13, 14, and 15 year olds can't protest. Because their power is so is so is so dangerous. The things they do are so dangerous, they must be stopped. And they worked it. They worked it so that those kids will be in school, those kids will not have be able to do anything. But it's alright for them to keep volunteering because they're really committed to that. They work harder than they ever have. They commit to doing so. But what we won't have them do is, is, is impact on our selfishness. Uh, I'm really curious about that. I think there's an interesting, there's an interesting connection with, with, with how you're framing that. Because actually I think there's, there's a, a, a number of clusters of, of, of people who got involved in the picket in 1986, 1987 as 16 or 17 year olds who went because their school allowed them a Wednesday afternoon to mm. participate in volunteering and the teachers were completely fine with them going and, and, and spending their Wednesday afternoons volunteering on, on the non-stop picket against apartheid. And, you know, 
But uh, uh, the, the I, teachers I, I, at, I, I, at Forest Hill School or Haverstock in... I, I became a religious scientist in Ireland because my mum said, I'll be liberation theologists. So you've got, you, you could have to go on marches. But nowadays, kids will be told by the teachers, what, well, you know, it's not even that the teachers aren't, it's, it's that, you know, are you are aware this might impact on your area. It's, it, our whole system's been designed not, it's not just about, it's about the whole pressures on, on better, the better in, uh, engaged upon them. Uh, you know, you know, I, you know, the only, the only, if they have got time, they're told, well, you should be putting it into, into volunteering because that volunteering will, will help you towards your career prospects and will help you towards your life. Their, their, their free time has been, has been managed in such a way that the energy that they, the, the really precious energy that, that they have will be taken away from, from protests. Because that's, you know, but there is a generation when you look at, like when you look at it, it came out quite recently, a report and said, you know, the one gener the, there is about three generations who do not commit to volunteering. And there are the, the generations between 55 and, and I think it's 50 and 65. Because that generation is the Thatcherite generation. It's the Mimini generation. It's very specific in Britain. In other countries, I'm sorry, I'm not disagreeing about it. I think it's a, I'm just saying, I think it's a really specific thing. And it's quite interesting. Did you want to? No, no, no. I mean, I, I, mean I, think, I think actually the other thing is, of course, the, the, the framework within which young people operated in the 1980s was very different to, to where, you know, we, Britain in the, in the late 1980s, actually there were at best 10% of the, the age cohort going on into higher education. And in fact, participation in higher education had declined in Britain throughout the 1980s. So fewer young people were going to higher education. It wasn't the norm for, for, most, for most middle class kids at least. Um, most young people still left school at 16 and went into employment. It may have been precarious, it may have been particularly low paid, but actually a lot of these young people were living, were in a position where they could live independently at 16, 17. They could get a either relatively secure spot or council housing, and they were earning enough to, to live off in, in central London at the time. So I think, you know, it's actually, it's, it's far more than just changes in how people organise politically. I think that it's, it's, there was particular opportunities for young people in London at that time to, to, to engage in protests in a way that it's not impossible now, but it's more constrained, I think.